What's up guys? Today I'll be taking a look at the new Dart Zone Pro Mark 1. It took me a while to get this shipped here to Australia since it's only sold in the US. But now that I have it here, I'll be going into full detail about it including stock performance and accuracy, whether you can modify it and whether it's even worth modifying. I'll cover everything good about it, everything bad about it, and discuss what kind of nerfer the Dart Zone Pro Mark 1 is meant for. Let's begin. When you first open the box, this is what you get. The blaster is broken down in its compact travel form, but as you're about to see, assembly is really simple. Take the rear half of the blaster, as well as the front half, slot them together. Grab the stock, the takedown pins, thumb screws and the front grip. The stock just slides on. Then insert the takedown pins and the thumb screws, making sure to line the thumb screw up with both the priming bars and the bolt sled. Now take a screwdriver and open up the front grip clamshell style and attach it to the front Picatinny rail. The front Picatinny is also compatible with airsoft or real steel front grips. Personally, I will be swapping out the front grip because the provided one is a little loose and has a fair bit of wobble to it. Aside from that though, the overall build quality is exceptional. You've got a rubberized grip, rubber padding on the buttstock, and the blaster shell overall seems very tough and durable. However, something I've found out is the stock collapses when shouldered too hard. My solution for this was to put some PVC pipe inside the stock that prevents it from collapsing, but another solution is to use a real steel or airsoft stock. The one I have doesn't collapse at all and would be a very nice solution too. The Dart Zone Pro comes with a full length dart mag and a half length dart mag with an adapter. This is basically an exact copy of a Jet Katana mag and adapter, though I'd have to say with much better quality. I look forward to picking up more of these if Dart Zone released them separately. Also included with the Dart Zone Pro are brand new full length and half length darts. And if you look closely at them, you'll see they have ribs that are the same diameter as a normal Nerf dart like this worker one. But the rest of the dart is much narrower. Because of the ribs, people have nicknamed these bamboo darts. Let's head inside to the chronograph and see how the Dart Zone Pro performs. First up, full length bamboo darts. We got a low of 127, high of 156, and an average of 147. Now for the half length bamboo darts. We got a low of 160, high of 182 with an average of 168. Looks like the half lengths perform a little better than the full lengths. Finally, I wanted to try worker darts, but I soon discovered an issue with them in the Dart Zone Pro. Some shots were fine, but other shots I'd pull the trigger and nothing would happen. Then when I slid the front grip back to open the breech for the next dart, the dart that was in there would weirdly fire out, but at a much lower velocity. From what I've heard from other people, this isn't just an isolated problem with worker darts. It happens with pretty much all darts other than the provided bamboo ones. Let's head back outside and I'll show you why I think it happens. One of the features of the Dart Zone Pro is that it allows you to change out the barrel. It comes with an optional plastic barrel that you can install if you want to downgrade your Dart Zone Pro for lower velocity games. To change the barrel, 
you remove four screws holding the muzzle piece, then you can undo the single screw holding the barrel, and it just pulls out. You can then slide the downgrading plastic barrel in and fasten the screw, but let's have a closer look at the high power aluminium barrel without all the shell in the way. Look at how loosely it fits in the barrel connector. Out of the box, the Dart Zone Pro has a really bad air seal, which is what I believe prevents any dart type other than the bamboos from firing reliably. I tried a couple of methods to stop the air leak, but nothing I did completely solved it. So for reliable performance with this blaster, it seems you're gonna want to use the provided darts exclusively. Here's hoping they release refills of them soon. Now that we've covered the biggest floor of this blaster, let's actually go shoot it. I'll be aiming at a target 100 feet away to test the accuracy. I'll try both full length and half length bamboo darts, and then I'll plot and compare the spreads. To get the darts to go 100 feet, I had to angle the blaster upwards a fair way, so in the scope cam, you won't get to see the ground like you normally would. First up, full lengths. For full length darts fired from a stock blaster, this is really good. Much better than Nerf Rival or Nerf Ultra for instance. Now for the half length darts.
Another good spread. Overlaying the full length shots, I'd have to say there's no real difference between the full length and half length ammo in terms of accuracy out of the Dart Zone Pro. For someone new to nerf or someone who doesn't know how or doesn't want to mod, this is really nice performance. However, thinking as a nerf modder, a modded blaster would hit that bin from 100 feet distance every single shot. In fact, I managed to mod the Dart Zone Pro so that it does hit the bin every single shot. But before I show you how, let me just tell you that this blaster is the polar opposite of mod friendly. And you should turn back now and buy a long shot or Exus and an internals kit instead if performance and accuracy are what you truly want. Still here? Well then let's get modding. So the first thing most modders would think to do is install a beefier spring. Unfortunately, there's nothing available currently that fits, which is a shame because Dart Zone have made it so easy to access the spring. Two screws, and then take this included tool to twist the spring rest out. This would make changing to a lower or higher powered spring, depending on the game you're playing, really simple. And maybe Dart Zone will release new springs for it in the future. But for now, the closest thing we have is a Jet Blaster Cedar Spring which unfortunately is slightly too narrow to fit over the plunger rod. So we'll have to mod the plunger rod. Now gaining access to the plunger rod is easier said than done. This orange piece on the end of the buffer tube had me stuck for a solid 30 minutes and in the end I broke one of the clasps anyway. Nothing a little glue won't fix though. Having solved that puzzle through brute force, I then found the plunger rod was encased by a plastic tomb with six little latches that have to be opened. A further 30 minutes later, and I finally had access to the plunger rod. Taking a sharp blade, I removed plastic until the AK Blaster Mod's 12 kilo spring fits over the plunger rod. Reassembly was the fastest part of the entire process, even though I'd paid no attention to where anything went. Shell back together, we can now install the new spring. Another mod that'll give us an increase in performance is swapping the aluminium barrel for a brass barrel. This alone without a spring upgrade gave me 10 FPS improvement with the bamboo darts. I'll also be adding a blaster tech scar barrel to hopefully improve the accuracy. And because I have to leave out the muzzle piece for this, there's nothing to center the brass barrel. To center the barrel, I simply used electrical tape wrapped around the brass barrel, which is then clamped by the shell itself. With the front of the shell back together, it's holding the barrel very snug and there's no movement at all. Now, before we head outside to compare the accuracy, let's see how hard this thing is hitting now. This will just be bamboo half lengths because nothing I did improved the reliability with worker darts. We still don't even have a good air seal. We got a low of 189, high of 221, and an average of 199. Keep in mind this is still without a good air seal and with a blaster tech scar barrel attached. Now for the accuracy test, and afterwards I'll compare the spread against the stock performance. The blaster tech scar is set to a one quarter twist. Let's go.
every shot hit the target. That's quite a big improvement over the stock accuracy test. Let's pack this up and I'll give my conclusions. The Dart Zone Pro is the hardest hitting, most accurate stock straight out of the box, ready to go blaster ever made. For someone who would otherwise go and buy a Nerf Rival blaster off the shelf for its simplicity and accuracy, this will blow Rival away. For Nerf modders though, this blaster is not that great. A modded long shot or Exus will outperform this with a low 8 kilo spring and far exceed this with higher springs. With simple to install full internals kits available on the market, purpose built for modders, it's not difficult at all to build something better than this. But comparing the Dart Zone Pro to a modded blaster is a little unfair. This is a stock blaster ready to go out of the box. And for that purpose, and that purpose alone, it's the best at what it does. In my next video, I'll compare the bamboo darts to worker darts in a perfectly sealed, modded 250 feet per second Exus 2. So make sure you're subscribed to see that one. And as always, thanks for watching. See ya.